This episode of Push to Smart contains spoilers for Transistor. Hello and welcome back to the Push to Smart water cooler. This episode we are going to be taking a look at Supergiant Games' latest release, Transistor. And I'm just going to, it's a very vague game, there's a lot that is left unsaid in the game, so I'm just going to read their blurb to kind of intro it in their words. Transistor is a sci-fi themed action RPG that invites players to wield an extraordinary weapon of unknown origin as they fight through a stunning futuristic city. Um, The game was released in May. This is their second game. Their first was the Critical Darling Bastion, which I believe neither of us have yet to play, so we're not... (laughs) We're coming in a little bit blind in that regard. So, Transistor. It's about... There's this weapon... And it's sci-fi, and you're playing Red, but she can't speak because yep. her voice is gone. Like Ariel. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Another redhead. <laughs> it's a very short game. It's only about five or six hours, which was surprising for me. And I do feel like the length of it was to the game's detriment. Yes. Just overall package. It should have been longer. Mm-hmm. I didn't. It was. There was a little too much time spent unclear of certain motivations of the very few characters that we have in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, That being said, I did really like the combat. I think it was cool Mm -hmm. once I got my head around it. But again, it was one of those things where I couldn't really get into the intricacies of it in five hours. Yes. That is my major problem with it. Yeah. I think um, we should probably kind of forefront this and say this game also let much like Bastion, but maybe not to the uh, extreme. Another Critical Darling getting great reviews. We didn't feel as strongly about it, and I think I feel even less so <laughs> than Jaylee. Yeah. I really mm-hmm. didn't like it that much. And a lot of it is the length, which is not to say that games need to be long and, you know, meet a certain quota in order to be worth my time and money. Mm-hmm. But the thing about Transistor... It presents this very, very cool world. It has this really neat aesthetic, and the way that it encourages you to explore that world and learn more about it is very interesting. It communicates at kiosks that you discover that tell you things about from, you know, as different as how the weather is determined in this strange city to, like, the way the news is controlled and things. And you get some, even though Red is a silent protagonist, she does talk through comments she makes on these posts at the kiosks. Which was so cool. Which was Once I figured cool. it out, which mm-hmm. took me a ridiculously long time. <laughs> yeah, and I really like the way that they expanded on the world, too, with the way you played. And they explicitly encouraged you to try different combinations of attacks to learn more about the different characters. But the problem is, disproportionate amount of the work in playing and experimenting is done in these challenge rooms, which are optional and away from the city. Mm-hmm. So that, I think, is the game's biggest weakness, is that it creates this great world, and then in order to actually play the game, you have to remove yourself from it. That's a very good point, actually. I spent the game kind of, just kind of lost, which there's value in the being vague and just kind of letting yourself into this dreamlike state. But then it was, it was over too soon, and the conclusion just carried more weight than it merited, given that you had to spend so much time away from it. That's one of those things is that, you know, there was a challenge room and I did Mm -hmm. the first one and then Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm kind of good. And then there was like several different types of challenge room and Mm -hmm. I was like, that is a bit much. Yeah. You just want to get back to the cool stuff. And then you kind of learn that you get to learn more about the characters who are actually the abilities in the transistor Mm -hmm. if you put them in different roles and if you, you know, swap Mm -hmm. up things, which was cool, Mm -hmm. but again, completely optional and I didn't. I never felt compelled yeah. to do these particular tasks. And one of the things that I find very odd that I've been reading a lot lately is that there's been a lot of people who are kind of praising it for having LGBTQ characters. Mm-hmm. I've read that Even too. though it's just footnotes. Mm-hmm. And you, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to take points away from it, but I'm not going to give them points for kind of hiding away these characters. I don't know. It right. was just, it was such a cool world. Such a cool concept, but I feel like a lot of the execution was weak. Right. But it had such a glossy sheer of paint over it that it's easy to overlook it. Which, I mean, I don't I don't even feel like it's fair for me to say that, because there, the guts of it are there. Like, mm-hmm. the 
combat system works very well and the customization options are really interesting, you just don't get to play with it unless you go out to these really boring optional challenge rooms. Mm-hmm. It's like, why wasn't that integrated into the game proper better? Because like, like the guts are there. Everything mm-hmm. is there. They just didn't figure out a way to mish them together more effectively. I mean, the atmosphere is mm-hmm. phenomenal. And then, you, like you said, to kind of get these character bios, to kind of get more deeply into the combat system, you have to go to, like, the sandy beach area with right. a bunch of monsters that you have to kill in 30 seconds or whatnot. And it just, it, it didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. And it obviously didn't work for you. No, I. it's like, the more I think about this game, the more I'm like, no, that did not work. I don't like this mm-hmm. game. I, I'm not even just, like, when I first played it, I tweeted, well, it sure is a game, you know, like, mm-hmm. kind of neutral. But now the more I think about it, it's like, no, I don't, I don't I don't even think it's that great of a game. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things where, because of the potential there, Mm -hmm. you don't like it. Yeah, because it didn't fulfill that potential. And for me, because that potential is there, and like you said, those guts are there. I liked it Mm -hmm. in spite of all of its flaws. Which I am willing to do that on some occasions, and I think Mm -hmm. usually for me personally, it's just a case by case, right? Like I am. I will evangelize Deadly Premonition to every single person I meet. If they say they're remotely interested in video games, it's like, I have a game for you. And there is so much more broken about that game than in Transistor, where everything works quite well. It's just really boring and not challenging enough in a way that is conducive to actually encouraging you to experiment with its really cool combat system. But Deadly Premonition just has so much character and charm, and it pays off when it matters to me that I'm willing to forgive it for all of its much more obvious and much more broken (laughs) characteristics. You know, we've talked a little bit about the gameplay, but since you're talking about the charm and character of Deadly Premonition, let's kind of talk about the story of Transistor. Mm -hmm. That sounded quizzical when I said it, but um, (laughs) it is because it is kind of confusing. Like, one of the things that I had trouble with is that you don't know the relationship between Red and the narrator until too far into the game Mm -hmm. because you have that kind of cutscene where he gets in the way of red getting killed but Mm -hmm. she was a singer he could have been a fan he could have been a stalker he could have been a bodyguard exactly that could have been his job like Mm -hmm. (laughs) or just a random bystander who they missed you know yeah it's just one of those things where it's not made clear so you don't Mm -hmm. know the stakes of their relationship until it's too late and when it becomes clear you don't have enough time Mm -hmm. to kind of get involved in this relationship Mm -hmm. unless you're kind of projecting a romantic undertone to it from the beginning right which makes like you said the ending feel a bit unearned Mm -hmm. um i did love the ending in theory but it didn't really have that emotional impact there's a lot about this game that i love in theory (laughs) and it's just Ugh, it's frustrating. I love the idea that she's kind of turning into this almost godlike mythical creator. And she has, like they say, the canvas and she's the brush and she can do whatever she wants. And instead of remaking this world in her image, she chooses, and I think it's a very kind of beautiful, humane idea that instead of just remaking a world where you're the only person there, you choose instead to go into this kind of matrix e world just so you can have that connection with other human beings and that's what i really loved about the ending because at first i thought she was just going to kill herself and i was like oh that's bullshit but then i i kind of saw it for what it was and i really liked that (sighs) i don't know i I, I like again i like it in theory but Uh i just don't feel like because for the whole game it's not clear what this world is and its relationship Mm. to anything else Mm -hmm. and it just all seems like you said kind of matrixy like it's really cool it has this kind of punk noir kind of thing going for it. I feel like the Transistor's narration, he lends, or even when he's not, he's not even narrating, he's just talking to Red. It lends kind of a credence to this idea of it being a noir. But it's just, to me, it wasn't so much, oh, she's giving up to human contact because I had no reference point for what human contact means. I guess, in this universe. Especially to Red. Right, because she has... I, I really like that she has the literally has the last word in the game after being silent. Mm-hmm. But it's like she's silent the whole time. There's no one else around. We see through all the kiosks that everything is manufactured anyway. I don't know. It just it felt really unearned and really weirdly sentimental in a way that the rest of the game was not. 
Yeah, it, 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 it's definitely, mm-hmm. the juxtaposition is kind of, not shocking, but it's it's a little off-putting because it's so, <laughs> the game is so, like, cool and kind of calm, mm-hmm. and it's just very, you know, stylish and aesthetic yeah. and everything. And then it's very kind of, like, heartwarming and sweet at the end. Which, I mean, I don't think those things necessarily aren't mutually exclusive, they just were here. It's a very sudden yes, shift, it feels Yes, it's like. very sudden, and you don't really have the chance in part because the game is so short and so much of your work is relegated to a really boring sandy beach, you don't really get Mm -hmm. to know it well enough to have that emotional connection. Um, And we did mention that it does, you know, take a lot from noir. And, you know, noir, film noir stories, they don't have happy endings. Right. Like, that's one of their hallmarks. And one of the things that we were having a discussion earlier that you said that really stuck with me that I just adore is that you mentioned how this is a story of what happens in a noir if the femme fatale who is red gets agency. And in that situation, she kind of crafts her own happy ending, which I thought was brilliant. Well, thank you. But yeah, I mean, that is how I read it. (laughs) And that's how I read they were going for it. And it's like, that's a good idea, but you didn't do the legwork to get there. Besides having this kind of really cool aesthetic, the awesome music, and then like his, just the presence of this male voice constantly. I just didn't like it. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I wanted to. It's disappointing when something like this doesn't meet expectations. So that does it for our latest water cooler discussion. We obviously had varying viewpoints on the same game, so please join the conversation in the discussion. Tell us what you thought, what you agreed or disagreed about our analysis, and subscribe and look forward to further water cooler discussions, scripted episodes, all that fun jazz. Not so bad when it's cold. Not that I know anymore. Help yourself and good. <laughs>